you uh, before we get started is that we, uh, a lot of hard work went into setting up this uh, event for you, and so we're so excited and glad that you're here, and we're glad that you're excited and you're ready. So we wanted to make sure that tonight, we know that there's a lot of stuff going on outside and has been going on for a little while um, in, in, our, in our country. And so we wanted to make sure that this was a very specific space of joy, excitement, inspiration. And so we're going to ask folks, if you're speaking tonight, to stay away from topics that are maybe a little bit more polarizing. That might be politics or religion. We really want to make sure that this is a space where people can just take a, take a breath from all the things going on outside and just... Just enjoy themselves and enjoy the community. So now that we're excited, we're ready, and we know the rules and the timing and all that stuff, I'm going to actually introduce us to our first speaker for the night. Our first speaker is a Toastmaster member, and this particular person has a lot of energy, brings a lot of passion to their speaking, so I'm very excited for their speech tonight. So I would ask you to welcome me and welcome to the stage Joseph Stegner for his speech. Good evening, everyone. I did not know what I'm going to speak about till the very end. I try to stay dynamic, and I just now found out that I got to avoid all that good stuff. So, one of the benefits of being a Toastmaster is learning to adapt to your environment and being confident. If I can do anything during this six minutes, my favorite task to accomplish would be to give you confidence to shine and express yourself to others so that others know who you are, so you leave the best legacy that you can for the world. There's a lot of confusion in the world, and I do believe that it's misunderstandings that account for most of the world's trauma. I come from a town that didn't have much diversity while I was growing up. They use words that can't say, won't say, shouldn't say. And I found that the way we look at each other is very important. The way we describe each other is very important. Aurora, one of our speakers uh, tonight, and talks about that. And words have the ability to paint destinies and create futures. Not only your future, but for those around us, because they ripple. All our actions, all our behavior, it comes from what we think or what we feel. Those are the motivators for all we do. Either we're emotionally charged and do something, or we've planned and set out to do something. Of course, we make accidents and mistakes along the way, but all activity starts from within. And the ability to communicate is one of those sacred things that since the dawn of time allows one person to set up their imagery inside another person's mind. That really is magic, in a way, to be able to code everything we see into words. Which brings me to another thing I'd like to address, is how quickly people cannot understand each other simply because different words are used to describe the world around them. People will argue not talk about religion, but people will give names to invisible things and will argue about them. Water. Is it water or is it agua? It's water. No, it's agua. No, it's water. There's a video on YouTube called You Poked My Heart. Write that down if you can. You Poked My Heart. It shows two children and they're arguing about whether it's raining or it's sprinkling outside. And one of them is certain. It's raining. My mama told me it's raining outside. No, my mama said it's sprinkling. No, my mama said it's raining. No, it's sprinkling. And it just goes on. But I see that in humanity, this happens a lot as well. People don't take enough time to really listen to what somebody else means. The biggest revelation, the most profound revelation I've had in my adult life is what a horrible listener I had been throughout most of it. I was 33 years old, divorced, feeling like I'd been banished from the touch of a woman, praying to God, why? And in that soul searching, I got the answer. Dude, you suck. <laughs> 
because I didn't listen, and excuse my language and the profanity in that, it is torturous when people do not feel that they are heard. It is torturous when a person expresses themselves, but what's reflected back shows that they don't understand anything what's going on. And I was that horrible search engine. How many of you have entered something into a search engine, put in a keyword, and everything that comes back is totally irrelevant? Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. Imagine being married to someone like that. You say something and the person's like, oh, I know exactly what you mean, and blah, 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 but I know because I'm smart, blah, 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 that happened to me, and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> so, it was good to know how important listening is because it's only when we understand what is being expressed that we can accurately respond to what the person needs, to what the situation needs. And that is why communication is important and why we practice in Toastmasters to be efficient so that what you say is what's understood the best that it can possibly be. And there will always be some misunderstandings, but to be able to communicate well helps eliminate them. So I've got to notice I've got one more minute left in my speech. Do not be dismayed by the ignorant mind. Let them say what they want, but continue to fight. For ahead of you waits the most brilliant of times, full of glorious colors and magical rhymes. Do not be afraid to be who you are. Your own special talents will carry you far. And be not alarmed by the doubt that you'll hear from a world that is weakened by hesitant fear. Too often uniqueness is wrongly suppressed. Small minds try to keep others' greatness repressed. They selfishly point to the thorns of a rose. See not all its splendor and gift to the nose. Please know that you're special and do as you will. Don't listen to comments that make your soul ill. To be rich is a blessing that costs not a cent. It is seeing the beauty in every day spent. It is no mystery or illusion to say that our bodies will wither and then fade away, but the beauty and the glory of the passion inside is a radiant splendor that no one can hide. Look around at the brilliance of all that you see and think of the minds who would not let things be. The way that they've been, status quo, c'est la vie, they changed the whole world with the strength of their chi. We all have our gifts to impart to this world. Let your life be a treasure uniquely unfurled. And remember that time travels only one way, touched by the things that we do and we say. With a confident heart, you can inspire and lead. Of all you can offer, the world is in need. Thank you. Joseph Stegner, everybody, our own honorary poet from the San Diego Pilgrimage Club. I, 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 I'm in, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask folks if they are residents of San Leandro. If you could raise your hand if you're a resident of San Leandro, raise your hand, please. Good, good, good. And if you're not,